Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial for how to make these granny square cardigans for American Girl dolls. I don't know if you guys have been seeing these all over on Instagram and Pinterest or any everything like that for people, um, but I've been seeing everyone making granny square cardigans and I would love to make one for myself, but I just simply do not have the time right now. So I decided instead that I would make a mini version for the dolls and I think it turned out super cute. I do want to say that this is a pretty easy crochet tutorial, even though it is a bit time consuming. If you know the basic stitches, um, you're going to need to know how to double crochet, triple crochet, um, all of those things, and uh, as long as you've made a few projects, if you've made granny squares before, you would be fine. Um, so it's not a difficult project to start at all. It does just take a while because you have to make all the little squares and then sew them together individually which can be a bit time consuming, but as long as you spread the project out over, I don't know, like a weekend or a week or even a month, you know what I mean? Just um, spread out the project so you don't get too overwhelmed and everyone should be able to do it as long as you have some basic crochet knowledge. Um, I made mine specifically for Valentine's Day. So in this pattern, I show you how to make two different um, granny square types, one with hearts and one with just a diamond, like a regular granny square. You can change up the kind of miniature granny squares you're making to make a cardigan for like any season, any colors, um, but just in this video, just know that it is Valentine's, and the, um, there's a pattern down below that you'll need linked in the description, and that is also a, um, Valentine's themed pattern, but you can switch up those colors and the, um, the granny square designs and do whatever you want. So, I'm gonna stop talking now and let you guys get into the video. Oh, wait, one more thing. Um, in this video, I'm making the shorter version of the cardigan with the tie in the front, but if you want to make the longer version, you're just going to add one more row to the back and one more square to each of the front pieces. You'll see on the pattern what I'm talking about. And instead of doing the holes for the tie, you should um, sew on buttons. You don't have to do holes for the buttons because they're not actually going to be able to close um, since this is meant to be worn open. So I hope that was clear. Um, ask me questions in the comments below or over on Instagram. Everything's linked down below in the description. And um, let's get started. Okay, so first I'm going to tell you the supplies that you'll need for this sweater. Um, the first thing that you're going to need, of course, is a crochet hook. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, which is a US size E or 4. That's the size I recommend you use because your squares will turn out to be the right size as the squares that the pattern is written for. However, each square is 2 inches on each side, so if you end up using a different size hook and your squares turn out to be a different size than a 2 inch square, you're going to want to change your hook size so that they turn out to be 2 inch squares. Next, you're going to need yarn. I'm using this sugar and cream cotton yarn. If you use cotton yarn, you're probably going to want to wash your sweater when you're done because it will make it softer and it will just make everything um, lay better when you put it on your doll. But you can also just use regular acrylic yarn, like Red Heart yarn or anything like that. You're going to need four colors to follow this pattern. Um, I had two balls of this, which is why I only have little scraps left of the other pieces. But you only need one ball of each yarn. You don't need very much of each color. Um, I've actually made two sweaters with the balls in these colors. The only reason that I have extra red is because that's what I used for the trim and the ribbing on each sweater. So pattern is written for four colors. You can always switch up the colors. You can switch up where you put the hearts and diamonds um, and just experiment with that. They're interchangeable. So if you want to use different colors and make a totally different um, looking sweater, that's totally cool. These are just the four colors I'm using. So I have red, dark pink, medium pink, and light pink. The next thing that you're going to need is a tapestry needle or yarn needle. Yarn needles are plastic, tapestry needles are metal, they both have big enough holes to put yarn through. I like to use a tapestry needle and that's what I recommend if you have one because it's easier to get through the loops when the end is more pointy and metal rather than the plastic needle, but either one will work. Next you're just going to need a pair of scissors to cut your yarn, that's pretty self-explanatory. And finally you're going to need the pattern that's linked in a PDF down in the description box below. You can print it off or just use it and work off your computer screen, and that's going to help you know how many of each square to make, the lengths of the ribbing pieces, and all of the other details that you're going to want to have reference to um, outside of this video. So that's all down below, and make sure you take a look at that. You're also going to need a ruler. I forgot to mention that, but you will need a ruler to measure the length of your ribbing pieces. So as you can see here, I have most of my sweater completed. 
this is the back of the sweater, these are the front panels, and these are the sleeves. The things that I still need to make are one more piece of ribbing. These are our ribbing pieces. There's two, one for each side of the front, a longer one for the back, and one for each sleeve. The measurements of those are written in the pattern so that you have them exactly right, but basically these are as long as the squares, and then your cuff pieces are going to be shorter because you're going to have a gathered cuff at the end of your sleeve. So I'm going to make one more piece of ribbing for this side and show you how to make a basic ribbing with a single chain along the top for sewing on. And then I'm going to show you how to make both a heart square and a diamond square. All of these squares use the same two patterns. It's either a diamond or a heart and they just have different color combinations. The charts for the color combinations I used and the amount of each square in each color combination that I used are also in the pattern. So what I need to do to make the sleeve symmetrical is make one that's light pink with a red heart for over here and one that's dark pink with a light pink diamond in the middle for over here. So I'm going to show you how to make the piece of ribbing, a square with a heart in the middle, and a square with a diamond in the middle. And those are basically the three things that you need to know to get all your pieces together. So let's get started with that. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to make a diamond square. Remember that the diamond squares look something like this. This one needs to be adjusted a tiny bit, but they look something like this, and the one that I'm using is in this exact color combination with the light pink in the center and the darker pink around the edges. So I'm going to take my yarn, put it over two fingers, put it behind, and cross it over. So now I'm going to look at the top where I have these two loops, I'm going to put this hook under, grab the second loop, twist my hook so there's a loop in that piece and then pull the long piece of working yarn through that loop. So this is just starting a magic circle. There's several ways to do that, and you can find different tutorials on YouTube if you need to learn how to do it. Now I have this loop on here. I'm going to do three chains. One, two, three. Now I'm going to do a double crochet in that loop, like this. Pull it through pull through two loops, then through the next two loops. And I'm using cotton yarn, which doesn't stay attached as well as acrylic yarn does, so sometimes one loop from the, the other loops stays on my hook. Um, but you can fix that pretty easily. Now I'm going to do another double crochet right next to the first one we did. So now we have essentially a row of chains and two double crochets. Now we're going to chain two, one, two, and we're going to do three double crochets, one, two, three. Now I'm going to chain two again. Sorry if you couldn't see that. I'm going to do three more double crochets. Still, every um, double crochet we're doing starts in the loop in the magic circle. Two. This is what I mean. Sometimes cotton yarn separates a bit more easily than acrylic yarn. Three. So now we have essentially nine rows if we include that beginning single chain. So I'm going to do two more chains and then three more double crochets. And you're still working in the loop. If you need to tighten the loop to make it easier, you can pull that end of the other string. One, two, and three. So those are the four sides of our diamond. I'm going to pull that outer end 
gently so that it cinches up but I don't want to accidentally break my yarn or anything. Then I'm going to chain two. And the way I like to close mine is to just look at this first row of single chains that we did. So you can see one, two, three, and then this one that's attached. I'm going to stick it through both front loops of that thing that's attached. Pull it through. And then just pull it through the other piece and pull this end all the way through. This is already a shorter piece of yarn, but you would cut your yarn here and slip stitch to pull that all the way through. Now, the way I like to do mine is to actually tie this off and not just switch colors. I think it makes it look neater, but if you have a different way you prefer to do it, go ahead. But basically, I'm just tying my two loose ends of yarn in a double knot. And then I'm going to trim these loose ends about that long. Sorry if there's a bug on here. Um, and that will just be on the inside of your jacket, like in here. So you're never going to see that piece. You don't need to worry about it. You can just leave it like that. Don't cut them too short or your knot will come untied. Now I'm going to take my yarn color for the outside of that granny square, which in this case is my dark pink yarn. As you can see, I don't have much left, but they don't take very much. So I'm going to look at my center. It doesn't matter which way you have it turned because it's going to be a diamond. I'm going to look for one of my corner loops. So I should have four of those, one on each corner. And this is where we did our two single chains. I'm going to stick my hook in any corner, just right through the hole, not through stitches. I'm going to pull my yarn through and attach it like this. Pull it through your loop. Now I'm going to chain three. Just like that. I'm going to pull this off to the side and I'm actually going to pull my loose end up into the back because that just makes it easier for me. You can do whatever you want. Now I'm going to double crochet twice in that same hole, just like as if we were working in the magic circle before, but now we're working in the corner hole. So now we have two double crochets and our row of single crochets from the beginning. I mean our chain. Now we're going to, once again, it's going to feel very familiar, you're going to chain two. And you're going to go back in that corner and do three more double crochets. You might have to slide your stitches over if you're running out of room in the corner. So there's that. Now that we've finished this corner, we're not going to do any chains in between this and starting the next corner. Instead, we're going to go right into the next corner with three double crochets. So make sure you're getting right in that opening. And do three double crochets. Now we're going to chain two and do three more double crochets. Now we're not going to chain two, we're going to go right into our third corner. This one has our knot behind it, so I'm going to make sure that stays on the back. I'm going to do three more double crochets. One, two, three. Slide that over. Chain two to make our corner. And then do three more double crochets. So we only have one corner left. Before I go to that, I'm going to make sure that both loose ends of my knot from the first color are securely attached to the back. 
and then I'm going to skip chaining and go right into the next corner with three double crochets in a row. One, two, sorry if there's like fuzz or anything in here, three, and then just the same as our other corners, chain two, and do three more double crochets in that same corner. So essentially each corner is going to have six double crochets in it with a chain two in the middle of each set of three, except your first one, instead of six double crochets, it's going to have five double crochets and the row of single crochets that we started it with. Fix that quick, okay. And then finish this last double crochet and then once again, we're not going to chain or anything in between this and the um, chain we started with. We're just going to go in the top loop of that chain and pull through our working yarn and pull it right through the other loop that's on our hook as well. Pull this out. I'm going to cut my yarn off. Now I have this loose end, and I'm going to tie that right to the other loose end of our same yarn on the back. I know that there's different ways of starting and finishing granny squares, this is just the way that I like to do it. I'm going to cut this off, once again leave it about that long, so that we can tuck it in the back when we're sewing it together. So, as you can see it looks pretty similar to this one, and now I'm going to show you how to make the heart pattern granny square. So the heart pattern granny square is actually not my own design. It's actually from a blog that I found when I was looking for mini granny square patterns. So I have a link to the original blog post down below. Mine is slightly different, but if you do want the written out pattern, you can check out that blog post and just follow directly along with that. Um, the woman who runs that blog has a great blog with different crochet project projects. So you should definitely check it out if you're interested. Um, but I do want to give her credit for making the little mini heart into a granny square pattern for us. So, the first thing that we're going to do is set out our colors. So, this granny square is going to be exactly the same as this one. So, we're going to have a red center heart and a super light pink outside. So, I'm going to start with the center, just like I did before. Get my red yarn. And just like we did the first time with the diamond granny square, we're going to create a magic circle. And in that magic circle, we're first going to chain two, one, two, and then right into the magic circle, I'm going to do three treble crochets in a row. So I'm going to pull my yarn up through the circle. I'm going to carefully pull through two loops on my hook, grab another loop and pull through two more loops on my hook and then the final two loops. I'm going to do that two more times for a total of three treble crochets in a row. And now I'm going to do three double crochets, just working on the same magic circle. Now for the point of our heart, I'm going to do a treble crochet, so three sets of pulling through two loops, and now I'm going to do three double crochets, so this is the other side of the heart we're working to make it symmetrical, 
So there's two. And then three treble crochets. And then, or sorry, three double crochets. And now I'm going to do three treble crochets just like we did at the top of the other side of the heart. And all of these are just being worked on the same magic circle. One. Two. Now I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to pull my magic circle really tight, not so tight that you break your yarn or anything, but get that hole in the middle pretty small, stick your hook in the opening in the middle, grab your yarn through. And then pull it through the loop that's on your hook, trim it, and pull it through. So we have a slip knot. And then just like we tied the diamond shut, we're going to tie the heart shut on the back. These hearts are really cute, and you can use these for other things besides putting into granny squares too. They make cute decorations. So now that we have our heart, we're going to work into work on making this into a square. So, I'm going to take my outside color, which is this light pink yarn. And I'm going to look really carefully at my heart here. And I'm going to look right where we tied that knot. You're going to see that we have this knot, or this, sing this single chain that's right here, in the center almost. We have one more single chain. And then we have this loop here. And we're going to go to what is essentially, if you skip counting the knot, one, two, three, the third chain on the outside of the right of your heart, if you're looking at it. So that's the chain that's right above the first treble crochet of that side of the heart. I'm going to stick my hook in there. I'm going to pull my yarn through and I'm going to chain one. Then I'm going to go back into that same chain and the chain that we're going to into is right in the center of all of these. It's the middle of the loop. I'm going to double crochet in that same loop. Then I'm going to go back into the same loop. I don't know if I was very clear about that. You're going right into here the opening. So I'm going right into here. I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to half double crochet. So I'm going to pull it through all the loops on my hook at once. Next I'm going to go into the next opening. So now that we have our heart completed we're going to work on making it into a square. And the first thing that we need to look at is these chains that run along the outside of the heart. Whenever you stick your hook in to do a new stitch, you're going to be sticking it into the center of one of these chains and working in the loop that's towards the back of the heart. So the first loop that we're going to work in is going to be on the right side of the heart if you're looking straight at it. We're going to find our first treble crochet right here and we're going to go into the loop that's right to the left of it. So this is the third chain on the outside from the center of the heart. I'm going to take the end of my yarn, pull it through, and I'm going to hook it on like that, and then chain one. Next I'm going to go right back into that same loop and do a double crochet. Then I'm going to go back into that same loop again 
and do a half double crochet, so pull through all of the loops on my hook at once. Next I'm going to go into the next opening and do a double crochet. Then I'm going to skip this chain that's right here, right on the center of the heart, and instead do a treble crochet right into the center of the heart on the magic ring that we made when we were making the heart in red. So I'm going to do that. And after I've done that, I'm going to make sure that the ends of my knot are staying towards the back of the heart, since those were also on that same magic circle. Now I'm going to double crochet into the second chain, one, two, so I'm skipping a chain, double crocheting here, now I'm going to do a half double crochet and then a double crochet in the next opening. So half double crochet, back into the same opening and double crochet. Now this is going to be the corner of our square, so I'm going to chain two, now I'm going to double crochet into the next opening, and then go back in that same opening and half double crochet. Next I'm going to go directly into the next opening and do a single crochet. Then I'm going to go into the next opening and do a half double crochet. Next I'm going to do a double crochet in the next opening. Then I'm going to do a half triple crochet. So you're going to start like you're doing a treble crochet and then pull through all of the loops that are left on your hook. And if you're like me and you're using cotton yarn and a small hook, which I know some of you will be if you're doing exactly what I'm doing, you might want to use your fingers to help you with that and make sure you get all the right loops open. Next I'm going to do a treble crochet in the next opening. And this is just a regular treble crochet not a half treble. Then I'm going to chain two for our bottom corner. And I'm going to do another treble crochet in the same opening we did the last one in. You're not going to a new opening here. And then finally, for the third stitch in that same opening, I'm going to do another half treble crochet. So now we're going to do the very center of the heart. So we're going to go in the next opening and again do three stitches. First a double crochet, then a half double crochet. then another double crochet. So now we're going to work back up the other side of the heart, which is the same as the side we just did for the most part. So we're going to start in the next opening with a half treble crochet, then we're going to do a treble crochet in that same opening. Then we're going to chain two for the other bottom corner and do a treble crochet in the same opening. Then we're going to do a half treble crochet in the opening right next to the one we were just working in. So this is a half treble crochet.
and then in that same opening we're going to do a double crochet then we're going to do a half double crochet in the next opening Then we're going to do a single crochet in the opening after that. And as you can see, we have two loops left. So in the first one, we're going to do a half double crochet. And in the next one, we're going to do a double crochet. Now, if you get to that point in your heart and you only have one loop left, not two like I did, that's okay. You can do both the half double crochet and the double crochet in the same heart. It just depends what stitch you started on and if you skipped the right stitches in the middle. Um, I don't actually know what the correct way to do it is. Sometimes it turns out one way, sometimes it turns out the other way, just depending on how well you can see your stitches at the top. It's not a big deal. You can just do it the way I did, or you can do them both in the same stitch. I'm going to go up and find this first chain on the top, and pull through all my loops, cut my yarn, and tie on the back. Come off my ends. And there we go. So that is how you make both of the types of squares that are used in this pattern. If you want to make them all one type or all the other type or use some other kind of miniature granny square pattern that you found, go ahead. Like as long as they're two inch squares, your pattern will turn out fine. And you can look at the chart um, pattern in the description to find out the right number of squares of each pattern or you can um, mix around those numbers and change your colors and your patterns as long as you come out with the same number of squares I did total, you'll be fine. So now pause this video, go make all your squares, and then come back and I'll show you how to do the ribbing. So this pattern takes five pieces of ribbing, and the ribbing is basically just a long strip that stretches, and mine has a row of single crochet along the top, which just makes it easier to attach to the sweater. This is the one for the back of the sweater, it's the longest piece. I'm going to show you how to make a little short one right now, because it's for the front trim, that's the last one I have to make. But they're all exactly the same, and you just need to measure them and make sure you make yours the correct length um, for each of the five segments, and those measurements are also in the pattern. So I'm using red for my trim and for my uh, ribbing. So I'm going to start with just doing a slip knot. I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to go back in, skip this loop, so I have my hook in here, I'm going to skip this loop and go into the second loop from the hook, and pull my yarn through, and do a single crochet. I'm going to go in the next loop and do a single crochet. And then the final loop, which could be a bit hard to get your hook into, and do a single crochet in there as well. If you can do that, you're pretty good. It's not difficult. You're going to do a chain one. And then once again, I'm going to go into the second loop from the hook. But I'm going to rotate my thing, so I'm working on the back of my ribbing now. Second chain from the hook, and I'm going to go in just the back loop. I don't want to go through both of these loops. I want to go in just the one that's on the back, kind of like we did when we made the heart squares, how we just went in the back loops of the heart on the border. I'm going to go in just the back loop. Do a single crochet. Just the back loop of the next hook, or of the next loop. Single crochet. And finally the third one, and do a single crochet. Now I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to go back in the back loop after I rotate my piece, and do it again. 
one, two, three, chain one, rotate my piece, go in the back loop again, and I'm going to continue doing that until my piece is the appropriate length for the piece of ribbing that I'm making according to the pattern. Okay, so now that I'm done with the length of I need that I needed my piece of ribbing to be, I'm going to show you how to finish the top with a single crochet so that you can attach it to the main part of your sweater's body. So I'm going to do a single chain right here. Then as you can see, along the top I have two loops in between each row that's on the front. So I have this loop here. I'm going to stick my hook in that opening. Do a single crochet. Then here I have an opening right here and then another next to it this doesn't have to be perfect if you're not sure you're getting in the right openings you can always play around with it but I'm just continuing to do a single crochet along the top in those openings because that's going to make it a ton easier for us to sew this on to the main body of our sweater. So then when I reach the end, I'm going to get in one more loop at the very end and pull it through to make a slip knot. And I'm going to cut this yarn here pretty long because then we can just use that same piece to sew it on. So I'll pull through that. And pull it tight. So that's my last piece of trim I need to make and now we can start assembling the sweater. So I have all of the squares for my sweater laid out here exactly according to the pattern that's linked below and I'm going to use the rest of my yarn, my scraps of yarn I have left plus this red, to begin sewing my squares together. This is where you're going to need your tapestry needle or your yarn needle and all of the squares are sewn together in a pretty similar way to each other, if that makes sense. So I'm going to start with my um, front piece of my sweater here. So as you can see, I have at the bottom of each front panel a red square and then a light pink square. I'm going to pick one side to start on. I'm going to fold those two squares right sides together. Then I'm going to pick either red or light pink. I'm going to pick red just because I have the most red left and it does take a bit of yarn. I'm going to thread my tapestry needle and then I'm going to take these two and the seam that I'm sewing together on them is this one right here so that when I open it back up it folds down like this. So I'm going to pick them up, make sure I have that seam facing up, and I'm just going to start going through the loops of the border of each square. So I'm going to be putting my needle through four loops every time. And you can just leave this end like this and we'll weave them back in later. So just make sure you don't pull it all the way through because your thread will come out. I'm going to go through the two loops of the border of that square and the two loops of the border of the red square. Once again, the two loops on my one square's border and the two loops on the border of the other square. And I'm just going to continue doing that matching up the border loops all the way down the side of my square. And this same method is used for every single square that you're sewing together on your sweater. So just be really careful and make sure you're sewing the right squares together and you'll be all set. And of course, you know, most squares are going to have more than one um, other square touching it. So make sure you do that as well. Almost done with this one. When I get to the corners of my squares where there um, is an opening on the square itself, you know how we did that in the corner with the chains, sometimes you can only go through one loop on the square, and that's okay. 
So now I have that done. As you can see, it opens up and looks like this. What I'm going to do now is look at the front and carefully weave the loose end of my yarn back through using my yarn needle or my tapestry needle until it's in the center of my square and on the back. Then just because it's easy, I'm going to use my crochet hook and pull the other loose end of my yarn from the back of the square to the front and then back again through the square so it's in the center of the back of the square right next to the long end. And then we can just tie those two ends together and because they're in the center of the square they're not going to be super visible or anything when your dolls are wearing these. So I'll trim that. And these two will be right here just like this. So now my next step that I would do is fold these up and sew these two together. And just keep working and then work in rows so that these two also get attached. You're just assembling your sweater by sewing it together. There's no exact system to it, just as long as your squares are attached on the right sides. I like to sew my entire sleeve rectangle separately and then sew them onto the center because they're a little trickier to do. If you look at the pattern, you'll notice that this square that's in the center of the sleeve isn't lined up with a square on the body. It's right in the middle of this seam like this so that it's in the center of the sweater. So I like to sew the rectangles of the sleeves first and then sew them all together to make sure that I know that everything is attached in the right spot. So I'm going to do this in a time lapse, um, but just work at your own pace and assemble your entire sweater according to the layout of the squares in the pattern below. Okay, so now that we have the sweater all sewn together, but flat still, we can get a good idea of what it's going to look like once it's done. It's just going to be folded in half like this. And assembling that part is pretty simple. You just sew it together inside out, like we did with the squares along these two L-shaped seams. But, sorry if I hit the camera. But in the meantime, we have two more things that we need to do, which are to sew on the ribbing. So you're going to have five pieces of ribbing with longer strings attached, and you make, make sure your um, line of single crochet is on the top. So you have these three pieces for the top and bottom of the body of the sweater, which are pretty simple to sew on. You just fold good side to good side and sew along the bottom of this and the bottom of this single chain. So that's not a huge deal. The ones that are a little more complicated to sew on are the ones for the sleeves of your sweater because obviously, unlike these two, this is not the same length as the sleeve. So you have less stitches here across than you do on here, which means as you're doing it, you're going to want to start on this end and then work your way across doing more than one stitch in each of these that corresponds to different stitches on this. And one easy way to do this is to use either paper clips or stitch markers. I have some stitch markers here, and I like to use them kind of like pins which I know is not quite the intended use. But what I like to do is take this and you can use a paper clip and do the same thing. Put the good side of my ribbing, which it doesn't matter a whole lot which side is your good side, to the good side of my sweater. Stick a stitch marker through the last stitch of both and then do the same thing here 
on the other end. And then you can stick one or two more in the center and that will help you evenly space your stitches as you go along. So I'm going to put one right in the middle. And then this gap needs to fit all of these stitches and this gap needs to fit all of these stitches. And you're going to sew that on, do the same thing on the other end of the other sleeve. And then these ribbings that are for the bottoms of the front panel and the bottoms of the side panel or um, the bottoms of the back panel, you just sew on flat. There's no trick to doing it. You just um, flip it, put good side to good side, and sew along both pieces. And I like to use the same color ribbing thread, um, color string as my ribbing, which is why I left my pieces long, so I can use them to sew as well. Okay, so now I've sewn the trim on, or the ribbing on all the sides, and you can either do these two, you can do these two next steps in either order, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm going to first sew my sweater together because then I'll be able to try it on the doll and figure out how much of a border I want around the front. So I'm going to just sew these sides together inside out, just like I sewed the squares together before, so I'm going to start with the ribbing and then switch colors as I go along the sweater. Okay, so as you can see here, I tried the sweater on my doll. Um, it looks a little bit bulky right now, which partially is just how it's going to look because of the nature of the pattern and because of the cotton yarn that I used. But some of that will go down after we finish adding the trim and after I um, rinse it, hand wash it, and then let it dry and iron it. Which, um, in the intro and in the um, outro of this video, you'll see the finished version. But the next thing that I'm going to do is add trim along the front. And I think I'm going to add three or four rows of single crochet going up and down. But I'm going to um, show you how I'm going to start that. But instead of just finishing it, I'm actually going to stop and then come back and show you how I'm going to make a little um, buttonhole if you wanted to add decorative buttons on the other side. Or I'm going to add a little buttonhole opening on each side of the cardigan and then um, make a tie that you can tie shut, I think. So... Before we get that far, let's start with the edging. I'm just going to stick my hook into the bottom of the ribbing on one end of the front. Take my crochet hook, pull my yarn through. Do that. I'm going to chain one. Sorry if you couldn't see that. I'm going to chain one through that opening. Then I'm going to go right to this opening on the very edge. And once you get the first row in, it'll be a lot easier to see your single crochets on this ribbing. And I'm just going to do a single crochet. Stick my hook in the next stitch. Do a single crochet. And I'm just going to single crochet all the way along this edge, all the way around the sweater, for two rows, I'm going to go down here, and then I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to come back on camera and show you how we're going to make the buttonhole or the holes for the ties, because that would be the row that you would do it on. So I'm going to continue single crocheting, it's pretty self-explanatory, and then I'm going to come back and show you how to do that. Okay, so it's a little bit later now, so I'm sorry if the lighting has changed, but I have crocheted one strip around and then went back for a second row of single crochet. And then I've started my third row. I think I'm just going to have three rows total, although I might do four. I'm not completely sure yet. But I'm at the point where I want my um, buttonhole or ribbon hole to be, depending on what you're doing. I'm going to do one on each side and connect a ribbon to it. So making a hole for a ribbon or a button is super easy. 
you're just going to chain one and then chain another so you're chaining two and then you're going to go in on the next single crochet you're going to skip a single crochet in the middle a loop and then you're just going to continue single crocheting all the way around and if you're doing a ribbon hole you're going to want to make sure you do one exactly the same on the other side I did mine right at the bottom of this um, top square on my cardigan so I'm going to continue around the neck do another hole right here on this side and then I'm going to make a little strip of single crochet just to thread through there and tie the sweater shut so I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done and then in the outro of this video you will see the finished sweater um, because I'm going to wash it and let it dry and iron it so that it's all ready to go okay everybody once again I'm sorry for all of the shadows but I wanted to show you what my finished cardigan looks like on my doll um, the little tie that I made is 60 stitches long and I just tied knots um, on the ends of it so it would look more finished and I just have it in here in like a simple little bow so this is what the cardigan looks like pre being washed and everything so what I'm going to do is just go hand wash it in my sink really gently and what that's going to do is um, especially if you're using cotton yarn like this it will make your yarn lay a lot nicer like see how this is sticking out once I um, wash it, I'm going to let it dry flat on a towel, and that will uh, stop a lot of this from happening. I'm pretty sure um, I've had good luck with that in the past. And also, no matter what kind of yarn you're using, it's always a good idea to hand wash it if you can and you don't mind doing it, because it'll stop any risk of your dog getting stained if the garment ever was to get wet on her um, in the future, like if you were to drop your doll in water or um, anything like that. Uh, or spill something it'll stop your doll from getting stained so I'm going to go wash this let it dry and then you will see the finished two cardigans this one and the first one I made in a little more detail in the outro so here are the finished cardigans um, you can see some more pictures um, or these pictures in higher quality over on my Instagram if you want to um, I hope you guys make these and I hope you guys use your creativity and make them in other colors for other holidays or just in you know bright colors or pastel colors or neutral colors for any time of the year please send me pictures over on Instagram if you do I'd love to see what you guys make um, again I'm going to have the pattern linked down below which of course um, you need and the um, heart granny square blog posts that I used to make my granny squares. Uh, a few quick things, the buttons that I used are from Joann's, they're just in a little mixed pack of buttons. Um, the yarn I used, I think I said this in the beginning, but it's by Sugar and Cream. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else important. Oh, in order to get these to be a little softer, since I used cotton yarn, I hand washed them just in the sink with slightly warm water, um, and then I had my mom when they were still damp after they'd been drying but they were still a little damp I had her iron them with like steam um with like a really cool setting with um steam so uh that made them a lot softer and just kind of made the yarn um lay nicer on the dolls so that's something to think about if you're using cotton yarn um I think that's all I have to say I know this video is insanely long this is the longest YouTube video I've ever uploaded for sure by far but I wanted to make sure I went into everything um went Yes, went into everything in detail. I am so tired. Okay, send me pictures over on Instagram um, if you make them, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!